through with SoftServe. Uh, I'm really, uh, you know, honored and delighted to, to, to speak to all of you with um, this group of, you know, professionals and, uh, uh, you know, listening to all the all the uh, presentations uh, uh, before me. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, a pleasure to be in this um, in this group as well. So uh, my uh, topic in machine learning with SQL, it came from uh, some of the observations that I had uh, working with BigQuery and um, uh, looking at, uh, at some of the features that well, some of you may already know. If, if not, uh, I hope it will be interesting to, to get to know them. Uh, it's, uh, you know, interesting for me and i think it might be might be also appealing to too many people because you know machine learning is like something that that for 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 a couple of years already is a, a very um a good buzzword and and uh, and a keyword that that attracts uh, well different kinds of different kind of people in, in business so working with uh, sql as well is also is something that uh, Speaks over speaks to many many uh, professionals working with uh, with data for for quite a long time. So uh, combining ML and SQL uh, in BigQuery again, why not? So the agenda for for the presentation today is um, uh, covering uh, some uh, theory. So uh, uh, if some of you decide that it's uh, uh, it, it might be boring then you know no offense if you if you leave right now but still uh, i would like to uh, start with some uh, theoretical introduction just to uh, cover all the things that are common for different ml approaches uh, and uh, when we go uh, to 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 ml uh, in bigquery per se it will be just like you know using some of the terms and some of the concepts that are that are pretty common over here. So the first part will be uh, the introduction to machine learning. What options do we have if we uh, want to start using ML, but we don't have any experience, or maybe we don't want to have any experience, uh, but we will just like to find some some features. Uh, it's like you know, uh, in Poland we have this saying that uh, uh, how to do it to earn a lot and not to work a lot. Uh, so, so this is this is something uh, something to 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 fill, fulfill this this requirement. Let's say. Uh, then, uh, what are the reusable models that we can that we can uh, leverage? Uh, how can we build our custom models? What is the model? So, how can we uh, how can we and how should we define the model? And then, uh, how to use all that to build a machine learning pipeline? Because uh, in majority, uh, when we think about ML. We think about algorithms, but uh, the whole pipeline, I mean, data preparation and data elements that consist and build this, uh, this the, the whole uh, delivery of of, uh, of answers that we are looking for, uh, that, that, that's that's something that we should be working on. So then, uh, go uh, finishing the introduction, uh, I will have some uh, a quick overview over types of learning that we have, the, the most common ones then types of models that uh, that are um, that are pretty popular and that, uh, that are uh, in use in many many cases and then uh, uh, i will say a few words about uh, evaluation of the model so uh, performance of the model so well, why should we do it why is it why is it important and how to do it in um, in different cases and for different types of models uh, of course, uh, I mentioned BigQuery a few times, so we are we are talking about the you know serverless offering in the cloud. So it's it's uh, uh, nice to use, easy to use. Um, it's a pleasure to 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 work with that. But then in the end, uh, we or you know our customer or client will receive the invoice. So it's good to be prepared uh, uh, for the cost that that this uh, this usage will incur. And finally, in the end, uh, last but definitely not least over here will be the demonstration of how to use uh, BigQuery for, for machine learning, how to train a model and how to find answers, how to find predictions to some, uh, some uh, more or less hypothetical uh, problem that, uh, that we will, that we will create for, for, for the purpose of this, of this presentation. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have some possibilities of uh, using pre-built models uh, um, i can say that you know man, many many years ago back in the days when when i started my uh, adventure with it so when i finished high school went to the went to the university uh, every 
project that we had during uh, during our studies was like you know uh, opening the uh, Borland Developer Studio. Some of you may know uh, what I mean. Uh, then it was of course Microsoft Visual Studio in many cases, many many other IDEs. But the main idea behind that was that uh, you always uh, we always started the thing with the blank piece of paper. So it was like you know a, a blank solution or a blank project. Everything. Uh, um, I should have been written from scratch just to you know learn the principles so when i heard, first uh, heard about uh, the ml and the ai concept back in the days um, the first uh, you know the first thought was oh my god they like they, they are going to spend like you know months or years just to you know implement all this uh, uh, mathematics statistics all these formulas just to to, to be working for for uh, for identifying, let's say, a cat in the in the in the picture, well, that will be quite a lot of work to do, and uh, just you know, working on some custom uh, application covering my my own idea, well, it seems like uh, a lot of work. Maybe may, maybe that's too much to, to to handle. And over here, we have the answer to 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 such uh, to such concerns, and it's also something that uh, that is appealing to people who uh, you know. It's, it's quite common nowadays just to, to, to rebrand re ourselves and uh, change the, the, the environment that we are working on. People join IT teams because it's, it's, uh, they feel like it's you know, the, the, the way towards the future. And uh, if, if we have any, any larger or smaller experience with, with development if we're in any kind of you know, programming languages, uh, we would like to have some uh, some some uh, let's say sexy stuff uh, incorporated in the application, and of course it must be ML. So there are a bunch of uh, a bunch of things that we can use that are already built and ready for use. So, in, in G of course uh, we are we are uh, uh, we are walking around the GCP area today, but all of the uh, all of the cloud providers have their own offerings for this. Uh, like uh, I don't know in Azure it could be it could be like uh, the, the cognitive services for example but staying with GCP we have a, a handful of APIs uh, available for our uh, for for our different um, requirements or purposes uh, the names are pretty well self-explanatory so we have vision video intelligence translation text to speech the other way around speech to text and uh, natural language um, API so. Uh, using this kind of functionality in our in our application, in our solution is as easy as uh, as calling this uh, the calling the proper method of of, of these uh, APIs. Uh, so, for one one of the examples for the vision uh, API would be if uh, if we use the uh, the cloud SDK, or we can, uh, or or if we use uh, the regular uh, you know uh, HTTP call to to the method. So uh, we can have a problem of uh, anal of um, entity analysis uh, to to be to be to be solved. We can use the cloud the 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 the, the, the natural language API uh, to analyze entities, uh, and in the payload we just uh, provide the, the the content. So over here we have the sentence uh, saying that Michelangelo Caravaggio, Italian painter, is known for the calling of Saint Matthew. So. Uh, the synchronous call that we make uh, gives us the response with uh, all the uh, information regarding entities that we have in, in the in the document that we sent. So we have uh, we have the entities identified. So Michelangelo Calvergi would be the the person. There is a the, there is a set of um, predefined types that this uh, analysis um, returns in, in in the output. Uh, the second one would be uh, location, which is uh, uh, which is over here connected to the Italian world. Which okay, we, we see that it's uh, uh, it's not Italy; it's Italian, but it's uh, smart enough just to, to find out. And uh, as you can see, we are provided with uh, Wikipedia URLs uh, to uh, find some more details about those entities. And there are some some additional metadata, for example, the salience over here, where we and uh, with all the other entities as well. Uh, so uh, salience uh, shows us how important is this entity in the context of the whole document or the whole sentence that we that we provided to the API. So uh, as you can see over here, it's like eighty three percent of the importance is for this uh, for this guy. 
uh, is uh, well, it's pretty obvious over here. But if we have some some longer and more complicated complicated documents, we can we can also not uh, notice what is the the what is it really uh, about by looking at this um, at this result. Uh, some additional example over here would be uh, it's quite common also the sentiment analysis. So for example, we have some transcripts of of uh, help desk uh, conversations. Uh, so we can use the uh, sentiment analysis with the same uh, type of call. Just uh, we are just cha changing the the method that we are um, calling. So here we have the analysis uh, analyze sentiment, and we see the magnitude and scores provided for uh, for such uh, for such analysis. Uh, which shows us, uh, and it's provided for the document uh, as a whole, but also for all the sentences create, um, and, and that uh, create this document, uh, we can see the magnitude and the score. So score over here is the uh, normalized uh, number. So it's between minus one and one. Uh, and it shows us if it's the positive or negative um, uh, emotion, let's say, over, uh, expressed by this, uh, by this um, sentence. Uh, and the magnitude shows us the uh, the overall strength of um, the overall strength of emotion uh, within the given text, whether it's positive or negative. It's not uh, it's not normalized, so it's between zero and plus infinity. Uh, and it's also uh, and it's also uh, related strictly to the uh, to the length of the document that we provide. So over here we have only one sentence. So. Uh, so it's pretty uh, well. As you can see, it's the same. It's the same result. Uh, uh, it's 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 pretty emotional and it's pretty and it's pretty uh, positive. So it's as uh, as simple as that. Uh, the second option that we have is to reuse some of the models uh, that are present in GCP. And what does this mean to reuse a model uh, with the pre-built models that that we that we just uh, uh, talked through? Uh, it's uh, is the thing that we provide the input data and uh, and we get the result. With the reu reusable model, it means that there is an empty model uh, present, uh, waiting for training, uh, which is done by our uh, by our data. So we need to provide uh, properly labeled, and this is the trick over here. We need to provide properly labeled data. Uh, and train this uh, train the, the the chosen model with with the data provided by us. So, as you can see, names are pretty similar to what we had uh, before: vision, video intelligence, and so on. Uh, another thing that comes here is AutoML tables, um, which allows us to work on work on data that is already available in the tabular form. Uh, with vision, video, and uh, and natural language, uh, it's like you know we provide different different types of inputs so with, uh, with images and videos, of course, and maybe you know, a lot of a lot of unstructured information. Uh, here we can use also the data that is already available in the tabular form. Uh, the part in bold here, so the Vertex AI means means that it, it's a new offering, or rather a new offering in, in GCP. Uh, which is an uh, enhanced version of the AutoML. Uh, it uh, it has some additional um, additional features and and uh, uh, it's supposed to work uh, say better in an enhanced way compared to the AutoML that we have. It's running in parallel, so if if anyone has uh, the solution using AutoML, it can it can still be uh, it can still be um, leveraged, but. Uh, but Vertex AI is, is also coming. So uh, once again, if if we would like to, for example, if we would like to uh, reuse the video intelligence uh, model for OTML uh, for um, the case of, let's say, identifying or tracking objects uh, uh, in videos, let's say from some surveillance cameras on the on the highway, uh, then we should provide uh, the model with a set of labeled examples or labeled samples uh, depending on the model there are different uh, there are different requirements uh, whether it's uh, 1000 100 or uh, or a, a multiplication of these numbers uh, uh, in terms of how many uh, samples we should provide the model with uh, but uh, given that amount of samples the, the 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 model is trained and then we can use it to to for example uh, some uh, classification of different scenes in the videos or uh, or to track um, cars lorries coaches or any any other vehicles 
on the on the within the videos that are that are transmitted from from uh, from 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 the cameras and, and placed in, in in a remote environment. Uh, so uh, for all the other things like natural language, for example, there are as I mentioned uh, some uh, re some requirements for for the amount of of documents for the amount of uh, most common labels that exist in in the samples that that this um, algorithm should should be should pay more, more attention to, uh, but it's all but it's all pretty uh, pretty simple to to work with. Uh, just you know the, the, the whole workload that is in our site is to uh, have this all these all these samples uh, proper properly uh, labeled. Uh, okay, so uh, these were the options that are that are there for us. And what if we would like to have uh, our own custom built model? So, mm, what is what is really a, a model definition? Uh, a model could be treated as a set of rules mm, that are applied to the input data in order to get the uh, desired output on so, or something that uh, we don't know and we want the answer. Uh, so these very simple, the simplest possible models uh, that that uh, I described here, uh, we could have like you know the first function that uh, multiplies the the input by itself. The second one is a bit a bit more complicated, like you know a, a polynomial with with three uh, with three input uh, values. Uh, and the, the whole idea over here is that uh, we have the input data. We just put it to the model. Model applies those those rules and provides us with the output. Uh, uh, depending on the um, depending on the on the source that we are uh, working with, uh, these input data this input data could be uh, could be also uh, treated as features. But and the output that we are waiting for that we want to that we want to get is uh, is the label so the labeled output is is, is the answer that we get from the model uh, and i said that uh, we want to build the pipeline so um, uh, it's not only the thing uh, related to creating or uh, leveraging some existing algorithm uh, that will produce the, the 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 outcome for us and and that will solve our problem but it's also uh, the whole uh, the whole pipeline to prepare uh, the solution so the first part would be the data preparation, and uh, I guess that well, many of you uh, already know that different service, uh, the different surveys uh, show that uh, sixty to seventy percent of the time spent with data is the data preparation. So uh, in machine learning, it's it's fairly the same. Uh, first thing is that we, we need to decide what kind of data we would like to to take from the source. So. Uh, for example, if we are uh, we're, if we want to if we want to predict the uh, the price of uh, of a house or uh, some real estate in future, probably we will not use data on some I know animal movements on on the South Pole. Maybe there is some connection, but yeah, let's be let's be you know uh, serious over here and and try to find something reasonable uh, in the first place. Just not to go through all the data there is. Uh, but to find some uh, some 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 reasonable source for that, uh, then of course we need to clean the data, validate it, and enrich it so that it uh, so that it fits the requirements that we have um, and that we have stated by our model. So, uh, uh, for example, if we are working on some localization data, uh, probably uh, we will need to we will have to we will have to um, make sure. That the address uh, is either the, the longitude and latitude, of course, but but if we want to have it like uh, the street name or a street a street name and house number, uh, we would like to have it uh, consistent and not like uh, taken uh, not, not the data taken from from the from the source uh, in the form of some you know, free text area. So we want to we want to prepare the data and then uh, it will be split. Into uh, into two or sometimes three uh, three subsets uh, of data. So uh, splitting the data means that we are going into the second phase, which is the model training. So uh, as I mentioned on, on the on the previous slide, we have a set of rules uh, prepared that will be applied to to, to our input data, uh, so that we can get the the answer that we want, uh, and. Uh, 
having this set of rules that's that's of course the the beginning but then uh, we need to train this model so that it works for uh for future and for for information that we that we don't know yet so uh in majority of cases uh, the data is split like uh 80% uh, to 20% uh 80% is the data that that will be used for training so we feed all that information into the untrained model uh, and of course depending on the on the type of uh, machine uh, the type of machine learning or, or the type of model it's sometimes different but the main idea is that okay we have the training data and then we leave some of uh, some of the input data set to verify how this uh, model is really working for us mm, uh, meaning that we give the model uh, input we give the features and we already know what the answer should be and we verify if the, the if the value given by the model as the answer is really the thing that uh, uh, that 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 fits the answer that we already knew uh, if it does if the evaluation is uh, is proper then we have the trained model if it's trained then it could be used to produce uh, to produce the forecast to produce the the, the predictions it could be in real time, it could be in batch. Uh, if, uh, if we deploy the model to be, to be used as an, as an endpoint, let's say, we can, we can make some, some API calls just to get, uh, get the result uh, based on the input data that we provide in the request. Uh, if, uh, if we have lots of, the, lots of input data, like let's say we would like to um, uh, we would like to label some of the images or find uh, houses or cars or any other thing in the, in the image. And we have, uh, we have like, you know, thousands, thousands of images, uh, then uh, uh, probably we'll just uh, prepare a batch of, of those, uh, of those images and, and uh, run it as an um, asynchronous call uh, to be, to be, uh, to be able to work with, with the results in the end. And for some of the models and some of the data, like uh, let's say time series data, there are some algorithms that do not produce the trained model in the end. So uh, I was working on a project where, where uh, we were using the ARIMA uh, algorithm, uh, which analyzes historical data I mean the historical time series data and calculates the predictions uh, on the fly and writes it to the output. Uh, but it doesn't store or doesn't need the model to be stored for future use. If we have the algorithm that gives us the chance to store it at some place and then reuse it, I mean, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, find the answer within the model given different uh, input data, then of course we can, we can save and store the model just to, to make it usable for, uh, for, future, uh, for future calls. And okay, right now uh, some of the uh, learning machine learning types that we are that we are talking about. So we have supervised learning, uh, and um, uh, supervised learning means that uh, it's it's fairly the, the the same that I that I already described. So we provide our model during the training phase uh, with uh, values for different features and with labels uh, that are the result or are related to these particular values of, of all the features. So in this case, we have like a, a value of X1 and X2, which gives us the label of, um, of Y1. And this, uh, this uh, training set is, uh, is, is fed to the model, which, is, which could be then in the future used to, to provide the answer for, uh, for different set of, of, of um, feature values that we don't know what the label would be. So again, we have a set of X5 and X6, and we would like we, we are asking the model what would be the label for that. Uh, and the supervision here means that for a set of features, we are giving the, the model uh, the answer that we already know. Uh, on the other hand, we have the unsupervised learning, uh, which, uh, 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 which uh, as you might suspect, doesn't include the label so we give the input data to the model and it's uh, is the model's job to find out what are the correlations associations clusters that could be found within that input data so with uh, with uh, with this um, example in this example over here we can see that the model decided that uh, the first and the third 
combination of uh, feature values should be placed in the same cluster. Uh, and if, if we if we look at the um, at the visualization over here, we can say that okay, uh, model would say if, if it could if, if it could talk, okay, I had this uh, set of uh, data points as, as the input. I was using the k-means algorithm, uh, and I think uh, this is my this is my result that uh, these data points could be uh, could be divided into three different groups. Uh, where each of uh, which of those groups has some things in common, and that's 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 the reason why why I um, why I divided the, the 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 input data into such into such clusters. Uh, the third uh, the third type of of learning that uh, I would like to just mention over here is the reinforcement learning, which is very uh, appealing and it's. Uh, uh, the most uh, the most intelligent, let's say, form of of, of AI and and machine learning that that um, attracts many people. So uh, we have the environment, uh, which is in at some state, and we have the learning agent, which is our application at, at this point. And the agent makes some uh, makes some actions to the environment, which changes, of course, the state of the environment, but um, Along with the information about the changed state of the environment, the agent receives also the information about the reward or the penalty that this action uh, provided that this action turned into. So uh, the, the, the whole idea over here is to, for the agent to minimize the penalty and maximize the reward function that, um, that works for the environment. So uh, it, it could be, uh, it could be an, uh, an example of the game of chess, for example, that we give the agent information about the rules of the game, but we don't provide anything. Uh, we don't provide any information uh, how uh, agents should act to win the game. It needs to interact. It needs to uh, make trials and, uh, and analyze errors uh, of those tryouts and, uh, and uh, based on that, find the proper way to, to win the game. The other example would be uh, if we put the agent into the autonomous car, for example, and we, we would say, okay, safety first, uh, ride time should be minimized, pollution should be reduced, uh, you should offer the highest possible comfort to the passenger, and you should obey the rules of law. Go ahead, drive the car. So uh, this is this is the the the, um, the type of uh, machine learning that is that is uh, as you as you presume as you as you suspect is is very very commonly used uh, right now in different projects. Uh, okay, and then uh, we have the learning types. Then we have the different types of models. So we have uh, some of the some of the examples over here would be regression, classification, clustering. Regression and classification are the types of uh, of models used in supervised learning, while clustering is uh, unsupervised learning. I, I already uh, described it on this uh, k-means example before. Uh, with the regression model, we are trying to find a formula um, that a polynomial, if, 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 if you want, uh, to find uh, to to fit uh, our data points uh, as accurately as possible. As you can see over here. Uh, this is, you know, the, the linear function. So there are different points where we have a, a certain error, uh, and we will we will discuss it uh, in a minute. What does it mean for us? With the classification, uh, with the classification, there are different types of classification models. So uh, the simplest one would be the the binary um, the binary cl classification. So it gives us the uh, the result of two. Uh, answers, let's say true or false, zero or one, or class A and class B, uh, as you can see on the example over here. So uh, based on the given input with uh, uh, the supervised learning. So, so we have the, uh, the, the classification for, for the input data already, and then we would like the model to, to predict what would be the, the assignment to a cluster, a certain cluster or, uh, or class of, of, uh, of the answer for the data that we that we uh, that we want the prediction to be made on, uh, and uh, yeah, the, the evaluation metrics for for models. So uh, 
as, as I mentioned before, or just on the previous slide, we have this, this certain error. So we need, to, we need to be sure what is the performance of our model. And performance over here means that how accurate and uh, how reliable our model is. So for example, if we have uh, something that we built for our own, uh, for our own purposes, uh, let's say we are measuring temperature at home and, uh, um, and we would like to predict what will be the, the, the ambient temperature uh, in future, just to make the air conditioning work automatically. If the model is not accurate enough and it predicts that uh, temperature inside will be not 24, but 26, and we want the, the, the air conditioning to be run at 25, nothing really happens because we can always switch it off. But if we have the, the algorithm that, um, uh, that works on the fly and tries to predict whether the car work will hit the pedestrian, we don't want any error to be, uh, to be you know, any, any, any high over that. So we have different types of metrics that, uh, that are uh, related to evaluating the, the, the model. For the linear regression model, there are lots of uh, examples. Uh, the one in bold over here, so the root mean squared error is quite, uh, is quite popular. So I will, I will um, describe it in, in details on the next slide. For classification, and in this, in this case, the logist, uh, logistic regression model, uh, the, the quite popular and commonly used one is the ROC. So the receiver operating characteristic area under curve. Uh, and because my demonstration involves uh, the uh, classification model, then uh, I will also uh, make some, uh, I will also give some information about the, the, the rock over, over here on this slide. So um, the, the, the RMSE that I mentioned for the, for the regression model uh, shows us the, the, what is the error. And, uh, we are calculating, in fact, the distance between our data points, and the uh, and and the um, and the function uh, the function graph that, that is that is put on uh, over here. Uh, why are we using uh, the square? We are using the square just to, um, to 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 put on more emphasis also on finding the outliers, so the points that are pretty far uh, from our function. Uh, with the square, it's it's more visible, uh, even if we put it under the square root in the end. Um, also, the, the thing uh, about the square root over here is that uh, when looking at the error, uh, we are dealing with the same measuring units as the, uh, as, the, as, the, as the feature itself. So if we are working on a model that, that's supposed to work, that's supposed to predict, let's say, some distance, uh, the RMSE will also be, and the distance is, is measured in meters. The RMSE will also be in the same in the same um, in the same measuring unit. It will not be a square meter, for example. Uh, when we are uh, talking about the classification model, the thing is that uh, there is a there is a thing called the uh, plus the the confusion matrix uh, related to the classification model, which shows us uh, the amount of true positives, false positives, and the same for negatives, true negatives and false uh, negatives that we had um, as a result of the classification. And our aim over here, or the, the, the model's aim over here is to uh, maximize the true positive rate while minimizing the false positive rate at the same time. So in fact, we are measuring the, the, the area under the curve over here in this, um, in this graph. So if, so if it's uh, similar to the one that we have uh, over here in yellow, it's uh, it's excellent because the, the the area is pretty is pretty large. When you look at the blue one, uh, you can easily see that the area under the curve is equal to zero point five, and if we have something like zero point five, we can be sure that the ability or capability of uh, classification of our model is uh, well almost none. It's like a total random thing. It, it could be it could be one, it could be zero, it could be true, it could be, it could be false. And the interesting here, sometimes that that that, that is sometimes um, that sometimes occur, is the area that is equal to zero, which means that uh, the graph will be overlapping the x axis, and it tells us that the model is working totally opposite than it was that than it is supposed to. So 
uh, it classifies let's say we have true and false it classifies all the uh, all the things that, that all the elements that it classifies as true should be false and the other way around for for, for, for falses uh, and now uh, going away a bit from, from from the theory so going to the to the uh, to the cloud offering uh, we all know that we have to pay for what we use. Uh, so, over here, something that needs to be that needs to be uh, told is that BigQuery ML uh, has some different pricing rules than the BigQuery itself. So uh, we need to pay attention to that. There is, of course, some uh, some free uh, free tier over here. We have some 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 free usage limits. Uh, as you can see, first 10 gigabytes for 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 storage is is, is free for 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 a month for for every month. Uh, but the thing that is interesting for us over here uh, is the create model query. So the first 10 gigabytes that uh, BigQuery will be processing to create the model is free. Uh, and uh, well, you can say, you can easily easily say that if if it's some complicated uh, manner to work with 10 gigabytes, it's really not a lot. So. So we need to be prepared that uh, well, we make we, we can make some tryout but the tryouts, but the real uh, the real uh, real life example and the real implementation will be will not be free. We have the price of two hundred and fifty dollars per terabyte of data, while creating different types of models. So we have you know low distributed regression, k-means, and so on. Uh, and we can also leverage some other types of models like AutoML tables that we already mentioned, uh, deep neural networks and uh, well, Boosted Tree. They all uh, gives us the $5 per terabyte, but it also uh, infers uh, the, um, uh, the cost of Vertex AI, which is, which is uh, being leveraged behind the scenes. So we need to, we need to remember about that. And also, when we evaluate the model and then finally make the predictions, create the model to make the predictions. So then we have uh, we have five dollars for every terabyte of data that is processed to evaluate and to predict uh, to predict answers that that we would like to that we would like to obtain. Uh, if it's uh, if it's uh, much, if it's not that much, it's hard to say when you look at these uh, at these numbers. So uh, I prepared a simple. A simple comparison is like you know a rule of thumb. So uh, uh, the numbers should maybe should be should be a bit different, but you know based on some some of, some of the examples from my um, previous experience that might be might be relevant over here. So uh, if we had like you know four terabytes of data of uh, uh, of active data in BigQuery, and again four terabytes of some uh, data that is uh, stored for long term, some historical data. Uh, and we will not use more than one terabyte in a query. And then we have the ML part, uh, which creates a model out of one ter uh, processing one terabyte of data, predictions the same, and half of that for, for model evaluation, we will have like nearly, uh, nearly $378 for that. Uh, on the other uh, on the other side of the table, we might have the compute engine where we have our model running uh, on 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 our uh, custom built VMs or just you know regular VMs. Uh, eight of those might be responsible for model training, eight for uh, predictive, eight for predictions, uh, and with this sizing over here with thirty two V cores. Uh, each and every uh, each and every machine will be running for no more than an, an hour every week. Uh, so with this configuration and the same amount of data stored on cloud storage, so eight terabytes of data, you can see that the pricing over here is uh, well somehow comparable. Uh, as I mentioned, it's just a rule of thumb for some small environment. If we are talking about some really big cases, it will need. Uh, it will need a, a you know thorough analysis, but still, uh, I wanted to show that uh, it's not that uh, it's not that um, uh, it, it shouldn't be treated as some you know something that is really intimidating and uh, okay too too expensive to to even to even consider. Uh, okay, and then uh, going to 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 the to the machine learning features of BigQuery. So. Uh, you may find in some uh, in some materials in some uh, trainings 
that uh, BigQuery ML is still in beta and it supports only two types of, uh, of algorithms, so linear regression and binary logistic regression for classification. Uh, as you can see over here, it's uh, it's already um, it's already went uh, through through uh, uh, th through some enhancements and uh, the, the the portfolio has been enlarged. So we have different other uh, algorithms supported for clustering, for time series analysis, uh, deep neural network, and so on, even cancer flow model importing. So all these things are there for us. Uh, it, the, there is a there is a roadmap for all for, for many other uh, features that that would be uh, included in some in some future versions. So uh, uh, so we can we can um, we can follow that and see if, if we can uh, leverage this this kind of uh, this kind of feature for for our machine learning purposes. So. Uh, Getting closer to the to the de to the demo, uh, how how do we build the model in BigQuery using SQL? So it's as simple as three queries to be to be to be run. So the first one would be to create the model and provide the, the, the type of model that we would like to, to use, labels, so so the values that we want to be predicted, and then we we uh, then we provide the select from query. Uh, working on the data that has been prepared as part of our uh, machine learning pipeline when the model is trained we need to evaluate it so we we uh, so we use the ml evaluate method over here we give uh, we just select the metric that we are uh, that we are interested in so for example this rock that i mentioned um, before uh, and we give the query that was uh, we, we, as parameters we give the name of the model and the query that was used to create that model so it's something from here but slightly modified i will show it on the on the on the particular example and finally to get the predictions we just select the column with the predicted value and we use the ml predict object over here uh, with the same uh, with the same uh, approach as we did with the with the evaluation. Uh, okay, and uh, now the, the the demonstration. So, uh, what is our problem? Uh, we are uh, we are working with some e-commerce website, and we would like to predict whether or not a new user uh, will make any purchase in the future. Meaning that uh, we want to have the customer return to our website and make some purchase uh, with the second or any any further visit to our website so uh, so that uh, our you know marketing team can can target those users and and prepare some some uh, personalized campaigns or or, uh, or or special promotion promotions as an input data we will be using uh, uh, data from Google Analytics logs for our website, uh, and the thing that we would like to include in the in the model uh, at the first phase is the information were about you know uh, bouncing se bouncy sessions. So if the visitor left immediately or waited for a, or, or browsed through our site for for a longer period of time, and how long was the time that that he or she spent on our website. Uh, addition, in addition to that, we might uh, consider um, how far the, 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 the visitor got uh, in the checkout process before abandoning the basket, for example. Uh, where did he or she uh, come from? What devices they used? And from where on the planet uh, the, the, the session was uh, established. So these these are the, the the parameters or the features that could be used uh, in in um, in our uh, in our model. So uh, uh, let me now uh, let me now change the view. Okay. 
I hope you can see uh, you can see the you can see the the, the BigQuery uh, editor. Yes, we can see. Okay. Yeah. So I will create a, a new data set where our model will be uh, will be stored. Um, let me, let me name this one as community. Okay, and uh, well, of course, it's empty at this stage. So uh, the first uh, the first query that uh, that we'll be running is uh, is to create the model. So as I mentioned, we are using create model, create we create a replace the model, and we will be using the logistic uh, regression model for classification, and our label. So the thing that we want to predict is whether. Uh, someone will will make a purchase uh, during the returning visit to our website. And what data are we using? Well, we are selecting uh, features like uh, the bouncing session, so bounces, as, as I mentioned, and the time spent on our site. And we do that for uh, for 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 the for uh, for people that are visiting. Uh, in our site for the first time and uh, in con uh, while consulting the idea with with our, uh, with our data scientists let's say we decided that uh, nine months of uh, historical data will be enough for uh, training the model uh, and also uh, because we need to we need to have uh, we need to provide because it's a it's a supervised learning so we need to provide all some some um, some values for the labels for historical data for training so uh, we will uh, we will use this uh, this conditional here uh, if there if there were any transactions and um, uh, and they were made during the further visit not not during the first one we will make the zero and one uh, zero or one uh, value for for uh, for that label uh, and yes, that's it. So uh, let me use this. Uh, let me use this query to create the model. Okay. So uh, while the while the model is being trained, uh, I will I will show you the evaluation query. So as I mentioned, we are using the ML evaluate object over here. Uh, and we are providing the nearly the same query that we used for model creation. The difference here is that we are using some different time span. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, splitting the data between training and uh, testing uh, data sets, this one will be the, tr the, the, the testing data set. So previously we ended, uh, with, uh, we ended the, the period with the last day of April, over here, we use the data for May and for June uh, to evaluate if uh, if the model is uh, well working properly. Uh, we are using the rock uh, metric that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, all the values around 0 0.5 and below are are and should be considered as uh, as poor performance of of, of our model. Mm, everything above 0 0.6 can be treated as something to 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 discuss and something that we can uh, that we can work to um, to be enhanced so let me prepare the evaluation query i will copy this as well uh, the training is still in progress so we still need to uh, we still need to wait for a moment Um, it shouldn't take uh, it shouldn't take more than than three minutes so I guess uh, we'll be done pretty soon Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, we have uh, we have this um, collection of models uh, created here. Here is our model. Uh, let's uh, let's run this uh, evaluation query. Okay. So 
our rock uh, is uh, 0 0.723. Uh, so the model quality is decent. Well, decent is uh, maybe okay, maybe not okay. Probably we would like to see it uh, a bit better. So uh, as I mentioned, we had some, some additional features to be, to be taken into account. So uh, I will just include those, uh, those uh, additional features to, to our model. I will not go into details uh, once again, just, just to show you that we have the previous, uh, previous, uh, previous ones over here. Um, but again, new features are here as well. So we have the number of the page views. So how far did the customer go into the, in, in the checkout process? Uh, what are the, the, the information? What is the information about the source of the connection device, country, and so on? Uh, and we are working, to, uh, we are training the model on the same period as the previous, uh, the previous model, the first one that, that we were working on. So let me, uh, let me create the second model with additional features there. And again, uh, we, we need to have the, the evaluation query, which is, uh, which is built totally in the same manner. Uh, again, the time span is different. So we are moving um, to the other part of our data. Uh, and we will use the, 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 following, the, the two months following the period where the, where the model was trained on to have the evaluation. This one as well. It's the training. I can see some. Uh, in the meantime, I can see some uh, some messages in the chat. So let me let me please have a look. So is the data measured as current size of storage model or cumulative size of all changes uh, as we know what into it? Uh, so if, uh, if I understand the question correctly, mm, mm, I suppose it would be the, the, the current size. So uh, if we are, if, if our model is, uh, if our model is trained uh, to, 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 and it's, uh, because you know, we are um, if we are training the model and we want to add some new features, we want, we need to retrain it. So, uh, given that some additional features are added to the model, well, the size of the model itself will be will be probably uh, maybe not very larger, but it will change. So, if we want to keep the previous version of the model, we can do it. But uh, well, it will incur the the, the the storage cost for for each and every version that we have. Uh, the so you know the model itself uh, it's created we are then using it but if we uh, but if you want to uh, if you want to um, uh, think about the storage then making the predictions we can just make the query and not store the results it's just not all, it's just the you know the temporary table but if we store it then again we have another another table so we need to to, to cover the the, the storage uh, costs for for the saved results of the predictions. Model, as I mentioned, each and every version of the model will take some storage. So, so we are paying for, for each and every model that we, that we have uh, in our, in our uh, data set. Okay, so uh, yeah, the model is, uh, the model is trained, uh, took two, two minutes. Uh, let's see what, what is the value of the, of the rock right now. Well, it's, uh, it's zero nine zero nine, so it's uh, it's uh, for sure better than it than it used to be. So now that we are uh, now that we are um, satisfied, let's say with the quality of the model, uh, we can finally make some predictions. Uh, and uh, again, the creation of the query is very very simple. So we just use the ML predict object over here, and we have the same. Uh, we have the same query over here for that we used um, before, uh, but the time span changes. 
So over here, uh, we are using the the time the the, the we are using the, the the last let's say the last month that we have in the input data just to have the uh, just to have the um, ability to to compare. Uh, but we might also use data that is uh, for some totally different uh, some some totally different uh, different time in future uh, or uh, for 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 some um, data sets that were not uh, uh, obviously in the training data the the thing that changes in this uh, with this output is that we have an additional column with the prefix called predicted and this is something that is uh, that is automatically created by um, uh, by bigquery so let me run this this prediction for you right now And as you can see, we have uh, we have this uh, predicted will buy on return visit. So this is our label, the predicted label, and then we have the uh, we have some uh, additional uh, we have some additional in the metadata. Let's say so we have uh, the list of available labels, so zero and one, and then we have the probability. Uh, established for the model that uh, the particular value uh, would be the result so over here you can see that with the, with the probability of 60 60 almost 64 percent uh, model will give us the result of one so this uh, this uh, unique session id so this this user with the, within this session is 63 percent probable of making uh, a purchase on the returning uh, on the returning visit uh, and so on and so forth uh, this is uh, this is the, the the whole idea behind this uh, and now uh, because this is the end of the presentation uh, in in the console uh, i will i will go into go to the other questions the questions thank you for watching now uh thank you in advance for listening to the answers that i have uh, or I, I might i might have so the next question would be what are the tools available for model parameters tuning how to experiment with the quality of model how to organize model retraining with this approach so okay uh model parameters tuning that's something that um, that's something that we uh, um, that we need to let's say live with if we decide to use the the, the BigQuery ML. So we don't have this ability of um, of of tuning all the parameters that we might uh, that we might want to. Uh, some of the models are are just um, are just ready to be used but uh, if you would like to have them uh, fine-tuned then uh, maybe it's not a good idea to work with with bigquery for that purpose and and uh, uh, and some other ai per offerings should be should be used uh, and the, the quality of the model how to experiment with that so yeah, unfortunately, uh, as in, in many cases with with um, uh, with model creation and and model evaluation, uh, it's a matter of uh, well, uh, tryouts, uh, just you know to find uh, um, to find the right uh, amount of features, let's say, to, to be used or the relevance of the features uh, that are that are uh, uh, within the training set of our model. Uh, so it's it's a uh, it's like you know an, an approach where well we should work uh, as we see fit, or we we'll work with SMEs to 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 to, to find that uh, this particular feature will probably enhance the 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 um, enhance the the, the 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 quality of the model. So of course the uh, some additional feature engineering, which is not 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 the case over here. Uh, but 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 the, the right word over here is the yes to, to experiment right so so we need to we need to make a, a set of experiments to find what what will enhance or decrease the quality of our model and the model retraining with this approach uh, would be like you know we are using the the simple you know create or replace uh, so if we want to uh, retrain the model we can uh, either create an, an additional copy just to have some 
experiments again and evaluation for the for the second copy but uh, we can if we are sure that uh, something is uh, is really is really going to change our our initial model we can just we can just replace it um getting rid of the of the previous version so it's it's you know very simple approach without any any uh, uh, subtle subtle uh, features behind that uh, how to find which method was used for uh, classification um i'm not sure if i understand the, the question correctly uh olga could you could you uh, elaborate on this one because we are we, you know we we have this uh, we have the ability to you know to find this just the logistic regression so the type of the model if it's a binary that's one thing it could be multi-labeled as well but uh, the the method behind that i think that's that's something that is uh, that we need to you know uh, take as a as a as a, take for granted let's say uh, the next question i don't know if I, if I answered oh yeah the decision trees or neural networks so yeah uh, neural network is something that is uh, that is it, it it is selected as the separate uh, type of model so if you if you, for example if you want to use some you know deep neural networks for for uh, uh, for uh, for recommendations for example that then it you can you can use the, the the neural network created for example with tensorflow and just apply it to to be invoked from 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 bigquery uh, decision trees the same so uh, you can for example you can work with with some custom models so you can create those custom models with tensorflow for example and import it over here to be used with uh, within the query so it will not give you the ability to create uh, to create the new algorithm or the new model within bigquery but to use it for for the data that is that is residing there uh okay so the next one if i understand it right your condition transactions uh more than zero and new visit is no the current time range can be like this either had bought on um, yeah uh, so yeah yeah uh, i agree it's not it's not very accurate it's not, it's just you know uh, just to find out uh, just to find some persons that uh, were on the uh, were visiting the website at least uh, twice let's say and uh, the 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 um, the purchase was made uh, not during the, the 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 first visit right so so yeah i agree it could be it could be more accurate but just it was just for 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 for, for you know. uh, so yeah once again thank you very much for for your attention i hope it wasn't uh, that boring um, and if if you had any if you have any additional questions additional concerns just you can find me in, in teams you can you can drop me an email uh if if i will if i if i will be able to 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 answer questions i will do that with with pleasure